Good afternoon, and thank you all for being here today. I am Representative Mary Kunish Podin, and um, thank you for being here and sticking around to honor these women and honor the issue that we are about to speak of. The reality is we are here to talk about our missing and murdered indigenous women in Minnesota. And the reality of, of it is, is that native women suffer from violence at a rate two and a half times more than any other population in the United States. One in three native women will be raped in her lifetime. Four in five will be victims of violent assault. And really heartbreaking in Minnesota, there are regions where Native Amer American women are murdered at more than 10 times the national average. And even more heartbreaking is that our Native children experience two or more acts of violence by the time they turn 18 years old. And then there are the unheard, unsolved mysteries of our missing Indigenous women. In 2016, Canada came out with the results of a national investigation on their missing and murdered Indigenous women. The Royal Canadian Mountie Police acknowledged that in, in a 2014 report that there had been nearly 1,200 missing and murdered Indigenous women between 1980 and 2012. Yet our Indigenous Women's Group will say that that number of missing and murdered women is more than 4,000. And this is one of our problems. The confusion of the number of, the, of how many have gone missing or murdered has to do with the underreporting of violence against indigenous women and girls and the lack of, effective, of an effective database as well as the failure to identify such cases by ethnicity. In 2016, North Dakota also did a report and they reported 125 cases in that year of 2016 alone. So it is absolutely time that we address this high rate of violence and find ways to fill in the gaps in law enforcement between our tribes, our municipal, and our federal authorities. So in response today, I will be dropping a bill to ask the governor to create a task force to take this endemic of missing and murdered indigenous women seriously. This task force will require an annual report on issues related to violence within the indigenous populations and recommend ways to reduce the violence against our native women and girls. It's also very, very important that we understand the historic trauma that has impacted our native communities across the state these past centuries. But unfortunately, we don't always have that authentic historical data. Something, this, this is something that our agencies um, need to compile and struggle with every day. This task force will provide suggestions as to appropriate methods for tracking and collecting data and then provide measures necessary to reduce and address femicide against our Native women. I look forward to working with my com um, comrades, many of that are standing back here behind me, and um, with those on both sides of the island. Isle. <laughs> we are on Turtle Island. <laughs> um, and I look forward to working with our various agencies and allies, communities, the Women's Sexual Assault Coalition, and Mending the Sacred Hoop, as they have been working hard all these years to identify and support our indigenous women. I'm going to give um, others time to make a statement, but first of all, I would like to introduce Representative um, Nick Zerwas, uh, Republican who has signed on to this bill. Megawitch. Thank you, Representative Kunish Boudin. My name is Nick Zerwas. I'm a state representative. I represent Elk River, Big Lake, and a portion of Otsego. I serve on the House uh, Public Safety uh, Committee. And I was honored uh, when Representative Kunish Boudin uh, approached me and asked me uh, to help her uh, and be a co author on this bill. Uh, with Representative Kunish Padin's uh, leadership in this issue and in the community, I am confident that we can uh, bring light and attention to this issue, an issue that I became uh, more aware of in my work uh, with my law enforcement uh, partners in both the federal, state, and local jurisdictions. And Representative Kunish Padin is correct. The uh, the ongoing scourge of violence against indigenous and native women that goes unreported or under 
reported impacts large swaths of our state as well as many others. And so my hope is by creating this task force, we're able to identify those issues and bring light uh, to, the, to the situation and create a framework and a plan moving forward. This is a bill that I hope and expect that will receive broad uh, bipartisan support. And so again, uh, a special thank you uh, to Representative kunish Padin for being a leader in this area and for reaching across the aisle uh, to try to move this issue forward in a bipartisan fashion. Thank you. Thank you. I don't see her. Um, Mary Lyons? Yeah. Here we go. Bonjour. Uh, my name is uh, Kukum, uh, great grandmother Mary Lyons, and I um, am from the Ojibwe Nation First Nations. I'm going to read what I have to say because otherwise I'd be here for all afternoon <laughs> and refuse to let any of you out. <laughs> no more painful red dresses to hang. Support this Minnesota bill by sending your support to Representative Mary kunish Podine at house.minnesota. We no longer have time to put boundaries on who legally is obligated to bring legal attention to the missing and murdered Indigenous women. Does it matter if it happened on a federal property or all within jurisdictions? A crime is a crime. If we continue to do so, there's such proof that there's something legally wrong within our justice systems and will prove there's discrimination alive and still well. Many will argue with the cost of the legal power of who is obligated and when no one's looking, they'll bury it. We have too many labels that rest on boxes, crimes unsolved and pending. What's the fallout of this? The chaotic ripple effect stems from each of these murdered and missing women. It never goes away. The children, the family, the communities are left with the downfall. The cost of foster care, relative care, adoption, and most importantly, children that fall under the category of special needs is greater than the investigations that we should have had in the first place. We need to organize legally to bring forth bills that we can bring to the table of justice when an officer tells us this is not our jurisdiction. We can no longer look away from the possible serial killers that has been bound to our um, unknown counts and, and numbers that have, haven't even surfaced yet. We can no longer argue who's right or wrong because during these conversations another woman goes missing and murdered. It is time, truly time, and mean it. When one woman falls, we all fall. When, woman, when one woman stands up, we all stand up. We need each of you to stand up, not just indigenous women, but all women. And I say this because my sister was murdered. I was left with three beautiful boys that should have known their mother and not me. It is time because I work with these missing, murdered women and children and their children and the cost of foster care and everything that goes on it to the very end is in the millions. And it just keeps repeating itself because they don't have anybody to call mom. We have to wake up. And I believe the awakening is happening now. So I say, chi oh. Thank you. Oh. Uh, Anin, ni janakwadi kwe, nadijna kaz. My name is uh, Jamie Becker Finn. I'm a state representative uh, from Roseville. And um, I usually have notes, but I'm just going to speak from the heart today because this is, this is an issue that is uh, very close to my heart. Uh, I'm Leech Lake Ojibwe. I grew up on the reservation in Cass Lake. And uh, one of the important things about this bill and about the media here and everybody paying attention to this is the recognition that Native women are still here. We exist. We exist not just on the reservations and not just at Little Earth. We, we are everywhere across Minnesota. And I think this also speaks to the devaluing of Native women as people 
and we see that in the devaluing of our voices when it comes to different issues, when it comes to speaking up for education or pipelines through our treaty land, whether it comes to uh, you know, our healthcare systems and uh, child protection, our voices matter. We are full people and we are here and we need to be valued. And so that's, that's part of that conversation is supporting this bill and recognizing the loss of Native women in our communities. Um, I've only shared this story publicly one other time. Um, so my family has lived in the Cass Lake area for centuries. And in 1932, my great grandmother was murdered. She was young and she left behind my grandmother who was five years old. So at the age of five, my, my grandmother, my grandma Alverna, um, she lost her mother, and with that, she lost the connection to our people. And because of the death of her mother, she ended up in, um, in boarding school. And I know if her mom had been there that she probably wouldn't have ended up in boarding school and the entire uh, trajectory of my entire family would be different. And so I think it's important, it isn't, these aren't just numbers, each one of these women had a, had a each woman had a family, um, had a whole community that even, you know, 86 years later is still hurting from that loss. And I, I just, um, I'm really glad that we're finally having this conversation. It's, it's long overdue. I'm happy to work with my Native sisters and our Native Women's Caucus to, to bring this forward at this time. And I certainly hope that we will have um, broad support to actually get a hearing this, this year. There's no reason to wait. We can, yeah. we can have a hearing this year. We can move this forward now. We don't have to wait for a new governor or wait for anything. We have people here right now who want this done now and it, it's long overdue. We need to do the right thing. Miigwech. Thank you. All right. Um, next, we will have Renee Goodrich from our uh, Missing and Murdered March organizer. Bonjour. I'm Renan Goodrich with uh, Native Lives Matter Coalition. And um, we're here to um, support and to spread the word to help support the legislation, this needed legislation. and as a community and as a people in the community of multiple colors, multicolors, different from different backgrounds, we can come together and just help push this through. Let's, let's help move this through. Um, the organizing, for my personal organizing began as a direct um, outlet for my own grief. Um, um, at the time, it was in 2014-15, uh, I was um, in heavy grief and locked in grief um, about my sisters and um, personal loss in my family, my sisters and the, uh, the organizing and the advocacy um, helped me to, um, in the healing, with the healing. So uh, I reached out to multiple multiple family members who are who are also struggling and grieving and um, yearly uh, family members advocates and activists have diligently been working for years to bring this to national attention and um, um, and to bring the visibility that's needed and this um, here and especially here in Minnesota where it's felt so close to us because there's Every native community and uh, reservation throughout Minnesota it, it feels this grief of loss, either directly or indirectly. And it's a ripple of grief that ripples through our communities and ripples through our hearts. So here in Minnesota, we feel we are touched closely and we are touched deeply. <coughs> and so that helped to inspire and working with fabulous advocates um, agencies to help support the first murdered missing indigenous women's march at the American Indian Center. Um, now this year is the fourth year and um, 
um, along with the marches, there's also it's also sprung up into a solid uh, solidarity marches throughout the state. So this is just a beautiful thing to see um, because it opens the door for healing for families, and it's supporting families, uh, bringing them out, uh, sharing their story, um, supporting them because families are at the front line in this movement. And um, here in Minnesota, this is where, you know, the, the first uh, proclamation for murdered, missing indigenous women uh, was declared for Minneapolis and also in uh, St. Paul. Uh, carrying over into North Dakota 2015. And so let's move this forward. This is, this is where you know, it can ha it's going to happen right here um, at the close to our, expect the work that is close to our hearts. I've had the awesome opportunity to be able to organize yearly with multiple organizations each year bringing in more allies. Um, the first year was Sing Our Rivers Red. The second year, the beautiful work of the Minnesota Indian Women's Sexual Assault Coalition. They take the lead on this. And the solidarity marches that converge, we're hoping to see more of those convergence marches each year to converge at that American Indian Center where this local movement began. So um, I'm blessed for the support of multiple agencies. I'm blessed for the support of the Mending the Sacred Hoop and the Minnesota Indian Women's Sexual Assault Coalition for their beautiful support to family members and the help that we receive in our path to healing and find a way um, of bringing more visibility and to and and to be able to come out and share with other family members. So it's a healing walk that we do, and we're there for family members and help supporting their healing. So I just wanted to say miigwech, and um, let's move it forward yes. right yeah, here. Thank okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have uh, Karina Berry, a Leech Lake Ojibwe cousin of Rebecca Anderson, an indigenous woman and victim of an unsolved mur murder. Buju, Wabin and Nudinikwe, Indigenous Kaj, and Anishinaabe Mung, Makwa and Dudame, Gaz Agasquad, Jamaicog, and Dunjaba. I'm shaking because of like the energy in this room, and I know because of how important this moment is. And I came today to talk about my cousin Rebecca, who was brutally beaten and left to die in South Minneapolis in 2015. And here you can see some of her babies. She left six children behind, and they're left without their mothers. And here you can see our young relatives who, have, who are standing on Lake Street holding signs demanding for justice and to stop the violence against our indigenous sisters across our state. And I'm so thankful as a, a relative of someone who was taken away to have Representative Kunish Podin and Representative Zerwas and the Native Caucus and, and other allies here fighting for indigenous issues here at the Capitol and for fighting to protect the rights of indigenous women across the state. Our family is just one of countless missing and murdered indigenous women who have not received justice. And I really hope that this, this bill, I hope that this receives the support that's needed because as you can hear just from these few people, and I know every other indigenous person in this room has a story to share with you about a relative, a loved one who has been taken. And so miigwech for all of the support from the advocacy organizations and everyone up here. And, and I, hope, I hope we see some success with this. Miigwech. All right, I would like to um, ask Sharon Day, Executive Director of Indigenous People Task Force, to say a word. Thank you. Uh, today, I want to remember my sister friend, Ingrid Washawanatuk, who was murdered 20 years ago. Also, my two spirit sisters, Marsha Gomez and Faye Winnell, both artists, and Jamie Lee Wounded Arrow, a transgender individual. And finally, my blood sister, Debbie Porter, who was stabbed to death in Duluth. 
There's not one of us who hasn't felt the grief of losing someone to violence. It's time for this to stop. This chain of abduction, rape, and murders are directly linked to the doctrine of discovery and manifest destiny. These racist policies determined we weren't human and permitted the genocide of millions of indigenous people in order to take our lands. The murdered and missing indigenous women are a direct legacy of these policies. It's time to end this violence. 500 years is too long. Pass this bill and educate your boy children to be kind and gentle and to see indigenous women are humans just as their mothers are. And we deserve to live free and we deserve justice. Miigwech. Uh, and our last speaker here will be uh, Senator Patricia Torres uh, Ray, Torres Ray, excuse me, um, who is the author on the Senate side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here, and thank you for the honor of being in your circle, um, Representative. When you called me to be your co-author in the Senate, I was incredibly happy and thankful for the opportunity. I really want to applaud your effort. Thank you. And want to remind everyone in the public mm -hmm. that we need to elect more Native women. There is not a Native woman elected to the Senate. Mm -hmm. And as you notice, if we don't have women don't. serving in the House or the Senate, this legislation probably would have not been moved. There would be no voice to put these words for a proposal to become a bill and to, come le to become legislation. So we need our voices in the House and in the Senate. It is incredibly important. I applaud your efforts, Representative uh, Mary Konish podin and I want to make sure that all of us in here get behind you. Make sure that these, these Senate File 2768 become law. The statistics clearly show that when a Native woman goes missing, she is likely to be dead. The question we need to ask is why? Why do we think that Native women are not worthy of our attention, that they are not worthy victims? 6,000 missing Native women were reported to the National Crime Information Center in 2016 alone. And we continue to, protect, to pretend that these are just numbers. They are not just numbers. They are our women, they are our sisters, they are our mothers. And as you heard, almost every Native person in this country is connected to one of these cases. I will do everything that is in my power to make sure that this bill becomes law and that this is just the beginning. Because the task force examining these issues it's just the very beginning. Mm -hmm. We are only going to put more information before you, and we are probably going to put more empirical information before you, but we already know what is happening, and we need to do something about it. We're gonna need your voices. We're gonna need your support. Please be here to advocate for a hearing and also advocate for a solution and for the next steps. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Would you like to say something? Anybody else care to say anything? Uh, that will conclude our, our discussion here right, right now today, but I want to thank all of you for being here. I want to thank the media for sticking around. I want to thank all of my allies and, um, and um, friends that are here in the, the legislature. If there are any questions, we can take some. I think we've got a little bit of time for that. Okay. job not being done the same way for an indigenous women or what kind of information are you looking for to, to, to try to try to improve that, that the, the solution of these kind of things? So it's a very complicated situation. We um, first of all um, don't have enough data to really 
tell people what, what, what's going on, how many folks are, how many women are affected. And part of that is because we haven't been keeping the data. They haven't been keeping the data for a number of different reasons. Uh, there's a lot of cross jurisdiction with the federal government, the local municipal governments, the um, tribal governments, and uh, they all have different responsibilities on and off of Indian land. And unfortunately, uh, there are a lot of times where nobody quite knows what to do. There's also the historic trauma that um, has gone on for these hundreds and hundreds of year, years. And um, because this happens often and families haven't been able to get uh, answers to what happened to their, their loved one, a lot of times they aren't reporting it. And they're not reporting it for a number of different reasons. They feel that they're not being heard. They feel... Um, that the historical impression that they're invisible, that they don't matter anyway, that there are other important crimes to solve right now, um, uh, that they aren't reporting them. And there's also the shame and the, and the horror of going through something like that. So the first thing that this task force will do will work with all these different agencies, uh, government as well as non-government agencies, to collect real, true, authentic um, data just the way Canada did, just uh, the way North Dakota is doing it. Montana is now putting through legislation, Washington State. Uh, we don't know, and that's the biggest problem of all. And once we do know, then um, we will ask this task force to make some suggestions on how to address this situation. How can we work with our tribes? How can we work with our indigenous people and get the resources there so that um, this isn't going to happen anymore? And, and your bill would set up, it would establish a task force? Yes, it will establish a, a, a yes. At what level, how much money? We're talking less than a million dollars a year. It's got about 25 different um, persons on the task force, uh, governmental as well as uh, community members, um, victims that are going to come forward and, and share what they have to say. Uh, the different Indian tribes will have a representative there. And um, I've worked on this all summer long um, to get a really good bill put together. I had a small convening this summer where we had, well, I want to say close to two dozen women around the, the table here at the Capitol uh, telling me or suggesting to me what this task force should look like. So this is not my task force. This is their task force as well. And they are the ones that... Um, <clears throat> have asked for all these different entities to work with them, to help them to, in order to um, really address this situation and make it so that no more of our, our Native women go missing or murdered and so that they're not invisible anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's an important question. Again, Jamie Becker Finn, uh, representative from District 42B. Uh, so to give you a really great example and a recent terrible example, um, when Savannah Greywind went missing, we didn't hear a lot about her being missing in the, you know, the media. We all knew in our, uh, through social media, in our own networks of people that she was missing, but we didn't get the same response from the media, from law enforcement. Um, you know, even the kind of the same part of the state as when, for instance, when Drew Shadeen went missing. There weren't the massive calls from law enforcement and a coordinated effort to find her. And the reality is that when a person goes missing, your best chance of finding that person and finding that person alive is in the first 48 hours. So if the assumption when a young Native woman goes missing is, oh, she's up to no good, or there's you know, stereotypes that people have of Native people, and especially our young people, that all plays into this. So if law enforcement and the media aren't making a big deal out of it, well, then it doesn't seem like a big deal to the general public. Mm -hmm. While our, you know, they didn't find her for a really long time. And that is, is in some ways, I think, kind of unforgivable. <coughs> there just was not the response that there could have been. So that's just a really clear example of why this is needed and why we need to have this conversation. All right. Well, if there are no more questions, um, I want to thank you all for being here again today and showing your support. It's something that we will continue to work on um, as time goes by. Yes. I just have a quick question. Sorry to step up. 
Um, is there any way that the public can be helpful in getting this bill through? That's a really good question. Uh, social media is always our best bet. Uh, you can contact any of us Indigenous caucus members. We have Representative uh, Peggy Flanagan. We have Representative Jamie Becker Finn. We have Representative um, Susan Allen. Ask all your family, all your friends to contact us, to email us, and not just us, but all of your local, on yeah, we are on board. <laughs> you know, not just us, but all of your local elected officials, and we're talking mayors, councilmen, uh, legislators, senators, at the, the governor, the governor again and again and again. Um, I have been in contact with him about this. We haven't um, had been able to sit down and really have an in-depth conversation about how this might look, but we are hoping that um, with his sensitivity to our uh, Native American issues in Minnesota, that uh, he will take a really close look at this and be one of our allies as well. So thank you for that question. Thank you and have a great rest of your day.